Hey, hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm so excited to finally be doing a pregnancy update. So if you are interested to see how this pregnancy is going and where I'm at, how I'm doing, go ahead and keep watching. Okay, so for those of you who are new here, thanks for stopping by and welcome to our channel. Um, my husband and I recently went through IVF and um, we're so lucky and blessed to have gotten pregnant on our first um, transfer. So anyway, so that's how we conceived this time after four years of infertility. Uh, we finally are pregnant. So I'm just so excited to finally be able to do a pregnancy update, you guys. It's just crazy. Um, I do want to start off though by saying um, that I have been so lucky and so fortunate to meet a bunch of friends along this infertility and trying to conceive journey, if you want to call it that. Um, that have also gotten pregnant and I am just so thrilled for that uh, like all my IVF sisters out there um, and a lot of us are due in May together which I think is just oh, it's so exciting however there are still some of my friends out there who have not gotten their big fat positive yet and just want you to know I just want you to know that I am rooting for you. I'm always thinking about you. So if you guys are still, if you're watching this, you're still struggling with trying to get pregnant, just know that I'm always thinking about you. And I hope that our videos can give you hope um, because I honestly never thought this would happen to me. So anyway, I just want you guys to know that I'm still thinking about you and wishing you guys all the best and just praying and rooting for you that you'll be experiencing all the joys of your first trimester very soon. All right, so let's just hop in to the update. If this is a little bit long, I'm sorry. It's a lot of information this first video, so grab a snack or something. Okay, um, so I am eight weeks along, and um, I guess I'll just start with how I'm feeling, my symptoms. Um, so, at around six weeks, I'm pretty sure it was like six weeks on the dot, I got morning sickness, but it's not actually morning sickness, it's like night sickness for me. Um, I wake up feeling usually okay, um, but then around two or three p.m. I start to feel sick, a little nauseous, like this pit in my stomach that just feels like, are you hungry or are you nauseous? And it doesn't matter how much I eat or how often I eat, I still kind of have that nauseous feeling. Um, and then it really gets bad around 7 p.m. Around that time, I'm just like ready to just go to bed. So um, I call it more night sickness because I usually feel pretty good in the mornings. Um, I still don't feel like myself, um, but I feel better than I feel at night. <laughs> um, one thing that I'm experiencing right now is shortness of breath. And that kind of came around like a week or so ago. Like, I feel like when I talk, I get sh so short of breath and when I work out or like I just walk from room to room, I get like shortness of breath. So sorry if I'm like breathing weird. Um, and then um, I get really, really tired at like 4 p.m. Like at work, I'll get so tired. I like a lot of times have to leave a little early um, because I commute and the commute makes me even more tired. So it's kind of rough, but, um, I also get really tired in the morning around 11. And so I've actually taken a couple naps at work, just little cat naps. Like <laughs> I'll go into a conference room or like they have this massage chair and I'll just like go and sit there and just 10 to 20 minutes, just like close my eyes. And I don't even really fall asleep. I just rest and it helps a lot actually. <laughs> so I've been doing that. <laughs> um, uh, since Honestly, since our transfer, I have had cramping. Um, that has been a big symptom. 
not every day, but like I have cramps, almost like period cramps, almost um, like every other day or a few times a week. I just feel like bloated and like crampy. Um, and my uh, fertility center gave me a list of like common symptoms to not worry about and that was on there. And so I haven't been too worried about it because I know like that in the beginning when I was getting cramps, I was feeling a little nervous, like that was a sign of like miscarriage or something. So anyway. It's totally, totally normal though, so which is good. Um, I have had frequent back aches, um, like low back aches, which is not normal for me. My back doesn't ache. I don't really get achy um, unless I'm sick. So, but that's kind of how I feel all the time is like I'm sick or I'm getting sick, like the flu or whatever with the nausea. Um, and one thing that has helped with my nausea has been Unisom, and I know a lot of people say to take Unisom with B6, and I still need to try that, but um, I just take half a Unisom around like 7 or 8, like kind of before I'm going to go to bed, which I've been going to bed pretty early too, um, and that helps me sleep through the night, and if I don't take Unisom, I, I will wake up in the middle of the night and feel sick, so... Um, there have been a couple of times where I've had to eat something in the middle of the night, just like crackers or whatever, um, and that helps a little bit, but um, generally I think the best thing that's helped is Unisom. So, um, oh, my doctor did prescribe me um, Bongesta, I think it is. It's basically like Unisom and B6 together in a time release form or something. It's a prescription version of Unisom, I guess. And um, it's really expensive though. It's like $500 for the prescription because it's not covered by my insurance at least. And so we are just not going to go that route. I don't think my nausea is that bad. Um, if I was like debilitated and like couldn't work, then I would probably look into it. But I don't know. The Unisom seems to be doing a good job. So that's what I've been using. So the next thing I wanted to chat about are my cravings and aversions to food. So I haven't had like a ton of like diehard cravings. I um, definitely like my bread and crackers and cereal. Like I feel like I eat like a five-year-old kid right now. I like macaroni and cheese and ramen noodles and um, yeah, grilled cheese sandwiches just very plain, like boring food. Um, that's what sounds good to me because it just feels like safe. Like if I were to throw up <laughs> that food, it wouldn't be like awful. Um, and I haven't thrown up yet, by the way. So that's been good. Even though I feel like sometimes, I mean, I've been really close to throwing up and I feel like it might even feel like a relief, but, um, I have not thrown up yet. So, um, okay. So yeah, um, I'd say the biggest craving I've had is probably ramen because it's helped. I feel like it's helped my like nausea. So I've had a lot more ramen than I'm proud to admit. Um, but you know, it's just like survival. So I have craved a few healthy things. Um, I crave baby carrots and hummus. That's healthy. I crave um, uh, fruit. I crave a lot of fruit. Um, peaches, apples, no bananas. Those don't sound good. Grapes. Oh, olives. I keep craving olives and pickles, which that's pretty like, basic. Oh, and because I feel better in the mornings, I try to take my prenatal and all my vitamins in the morning with a spinach smoothie. So um, I do spinach, of course, um, protein, Greek yogurt, almond milk, and like some pineapple or some fruit. And um, I feel like if I can get that down in the mornings, then I feel a lot better about the survival foods I eat later in the day when I don't feel as good. So I don't feel as bad about all the ramen that I'm eating later in the day. So as far as food aversions go, I don't have a ton. There's just a few. Um, I really don't like ice cream. 
Um, there have been a couple times where I thought maybe I wanted ice cream, and then like when I really think about it or like actually take a little bite of it, I'm like, no, no. I don't know what it is, but ice cream is a no-go for me right now. Um, I haven't really wanted pizza. Like I've been really turned off by it. I did actually have some though last night and it wasn't bad, it was pretty good. Um, but then when I like saw the leftovers in the fridge, I was just like, whoa, I don't know. And when I really like, and I still couldn't eat a lot of the pizza. I had like a piece and a half. I was just like, I don't know. I don't know what it is about pizza. I can usually eat like two to three pieces easily. Oh, and then the last aversion is salad, which unfortunately is not a good thing. I wish I craved salad. Um, in fact, I was at lunch with my sisters yesterday and they were all eating this salad that I love from this restaurant that we go to. Um, and I like couldn't even look at it. I even like tried to take a bite just to see. It's like this kale and wild rice salad. It's like usually so delicious, but I was just like, no, I can't. I can't. Instead, I was just sipping my tomato soup and picking at my nephew's grilled cheese sandwich because I'm like a five-year-old. So each time I do these updates, I'm gonna answer a couple questions. So the first question is, what's something good that happened in the past? So this update is weeks five through eight. Um, something good that happened is we got to see our baby's heartbeat and hear the heartbeat, and that was such a relief. Like, oh my gosh, like, it was so amazing. And if you haven't seen that vlog, I will link it up here and down below, and you can go and watch that. It was a really special day. Um, and then the other question is what am I looking forward to and I'm looking forward to this week when I'll be nine weeks and we get to see the baby again and I'm just hoping and praying that everything looks good. Um, based on how I feel I think everything should be good. Um, it seems to be that there's definitely something going on in there and baby is growing so hopefully we get to see and hear a nice little heartbeat. Um, and that baby Cherik is doing great. In these updates, I also wanna share with you guys some baby things that we are collecting um, as the weeks go on. Um, but first, I do wanna share with you guys the gender, if you don't already know. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, we did reveal the gender there. Um, I wasn't gonna do a gender reveal party. I'm just like, I think those are cute and they're fun, but it's just not. I don't know, I just wasn't into it. So we are just, we just told everyone the gender already because if you have been following us, you know that we did PGS testing before, on our embryos before we transferred one of them. So we know the gender of all of our embryos and we didn't pick this gender because all of our embryos are girls. So yes, we are having a girl and I am so excited. I honestly, always thought I would be a mom of boys, um, but hey, I might be a mom of all girls as it looks right now, and at first I was like, what? I had to wrap my mind around that, but now I'm like so thrilled, so excited. So a lot of this baby stuff that we'll be showing you over these updates is obviously going to be very girly. All right, so we were gifted um, a couple things from family um, over the past couple weeks. And so I'll show you those. So we got this cute little romper combo thingy, like a little onesie and a romper. Actually, no, it's just a shirt and a romper. Um, I think this is three months, yeah. And this was from my sister-in-law. It's so cute, like I love, love this cute little flower shirt and that color pink. So. That's very, very sweet and very cute. All right, and then my other sister-in-law, um, she gave me, she has six kids, and she gave me like just a bunch of like little girl clothes um, that her girls have grown out of now, and it was so awesome to get like hooked up with all of that. Um, and one of my favorite little things that she um, gave us was this little romper. It's so cute, you guys. Oh, there's a little thread. Anyway, um, I love the polka dots. I love like the little denim material and the little bow. Ooh, so cute. Like these little baby clothes are so dang cute. And this is zero to three months. And our due date is May the 4th, which is 
kind of funny. If you guys know us, we're really big Star Wars fans. So that's crazy that we are due that day. But anyway, so we're due the 1st of May. So by the time she's three months, or this is zero to three months, but you know, this is like a great little summer outfit. So I'm so excited. Okay, and then one last little baby clothing thing. <laughs> guys, they're so cute. Um, my mother-in-law stopped by the other day and dropped off this little three pack of onesies, which are so tiny. They're newborn. They're so tiny, but I love gray and pink together. I think it's super cute. And I'm not like way into, I didn't think I was way into like the girly pink colors, but uh, the more I see these little girl clothes, the more I'm just like, oh, it's, it's so cute. Um, but then there's this cute little, um, kitty one and then the little pink and gray polka dots. Anyway, so cute, so tiny. I'm so excited. All these little clothes are making me so excited. So another awesome thing that happened the past week was we were given a crib and like a matching glider rocking chair with an ottoman. And I'm so excited um, because those are two very expensive um, purchases and our friend was not using them anymore because they're done having kids and they're in perfectly fine shape. So they gave them to us and we were just so grateful and excited because we can start like figuring out what we're going to do with the nursery. Cause I honestly like haven't even thought what I would do, but now that like we already have the crib and the rocker, then we kind of know how to, um, design, I guess the nursery based off of those two things. Um, even though I'm not like, I don't think I'm going to decorate the nursery to be like super extravagant and probably just going to do pretty minimal um, decorating in there, but I'm excited to make it all cozy for our baby. Um, and yeah, so we got the crib and the rocking chair and then my cousin had a baby and she was gifted two rock and plays and she gave one to us and I'm so grateful and so excited. Like it was still in the box. Like those kinds of things just, they get like when we're given stuff like that, it's just like such a relief because we've already spent so much money on trying to get pregnant that when people are helping us out this way, it's just been so appreciated. So super grateful for that. And then yeah, all the clothes too. So we're just so excited. Like I'm only eight weeks, but I feel like we have so much, um, that has like already been given to us that we're able to get started. So I wanted to share with you guys my favorite pregnancy app and that's the Ovia app. And the reason why I use that one the most and I like it the most is because you can enter every day, you can enter in a bunch of like things, like how you're feeling mentally, physically, um, what you're craving, what vitamins you're taking, how much sleep you're getting. It's a lot of stuff that you can track and it might seem a little tedious to do it. And I don't do it every day, but I do it basically every day. But I just like the idea of being able to go back and look at like what I was craving and what I, how much sleep I was getting and, um, you know, how I was feeling mentally because there've been some days where I've been moody and some days where I felt lazy and blah and some days where I felt really excited. And I just like looking back and being able to see, um, and then if I get pregnant again later on, I can compare day by day basically. Um, so I really like the Ovia app. Um, I also really like the Bump app and um, the What to Expect app. Um, I like the What to Expect app. I like the community on there. And I kind of look at Baby Center app sometimes. Um, but I'd say like the What to Expect app and the Ovia app are probably the ones I use the most. Okay, another thing that has happened in the past few weeks is I have been doing my own progesterone and oil shots. So I still have to do those all the way through the first trimester. So if you guys are familiar with IVF, um, IVF pregnancies are a little different. Once you get pregnant, you still have to continue using, I mean, doing a bunch of medications to help sustain and support the pregnancy. So I do progesterone and oil injections every morning and I do a progesterone suppository every morning and night. So that gets a little annoying because in the mornings I have to wake up a half hour early to do this, like put the suppository in and just lay there. And then I can get out of bed like half hour later. It's kind of inconvenient, but 
I'll do whatever I need to do um, to support his pregnancy. So the other thing I need to do, I still do, I guess, um, is every Tuesday and Friday I do an estradiol shot injection in my booty. So both the estradiol and the progesterone and oil shots I have been giving to myself and I'm super proud of myself because I never did any of the IVF injections previously. Um, like the subcutaneous ones that go in your stomach, I never did those by myself. I was too freaked out. And then just one morning, I just like got the drive to try it myself. And I like twisted around and did my own injection. And I felt so empowered and proud of myself. So now I just do it myself because it's easier because then I don't have to like wake up Eric at a certain time because I have to do him every morning and you know it's like I can just do him right before I leave for work or right before I go for a run or right before I go for a walk um and it's just more like in my control I just it was just kind of inconvenient before um but yeah and I just do it really quick and yeah it's like done so if you guys want me to show you like how I do it myself um, if some of you are trying to do them on your own, cause it is kind of tricky and you have to like twist and do this like whole workout to get back there and like uh, do the injection, but I do it now. I figured it out and I'm very proud of myself as you can see. <laughs> um, so that is definitely a new thing. All right. I did want to tell you guys a little bit about my exercise routine, I guess that I have going on. It's not much of a routine as compared to what I was doing before I was pregnant. So when I found out I was pregnant, I asked my doctor, you know, like what as far as exercise goes, what's safe, what should I be doing? And she just told me that as long as I wasn't pushing myself, then I was fine to just keep doing what I was doing before um, I got pregnant. So another thing she mentioned too was like the heart rate kind of test. Basically, if I could talk while I was working out, then I was good. But if I was out of breath, like I couldn't talk while working out, then I need to take it down a little bit and also um, not to lift anything heavier than what I was lifting before I was pregnant. And I actually haven't lifted any weights yet. Not really. Um, so what my like workout routine has been, has been, um, just every morning I try to do at least 15 minutes of yoga or Pilates. Um, and I also try to meditate every day for at least five minutes. Um, that's the base. Like every day, that's what I try to do every single day. And then if I'm feeling really good, then I will go on a jog. I'll go on a walk, like a 30 minute jog or a 45 minute walk. Um, and then I will also sometimes go to the gym and go to an aerobics class. And I just, um, try to keep that like lower heart rate idea in my head when I'm working out. So while I'm jogging, I try to like sing the song, um, I'm listening to, and if I can sing it okay, then I know um, that my pace is fine and you know I'm not out of breath and I'm not pushing myself too hard. I try to just take it easy. Um, and I like to get my heart rate up and I like to like feel like I'm exercising, but I'm not pushing myself. So when I go to like these aerobics classes that I really like, um, I don't really do the burpees or like the you know um, tuck jumps and stuff like that that they do. Um, I'll just do squats and kind of modify things. I'll do some of the jumping jacks, but maybe not all of them. So yeah, I just try to take it down a notch. And I think it's been really good. I actually feel like if I am feeling really good in the morning, like I'm feeling more like myself, and I do take time to do a longer workout, you know, like 45 minutes to an hour, then I feel so good throughout the whole day. Um, however, if... I'm not feeling good and I try to like make myself go on a walk or something, I swear that makes me feel worse throughout the day. So I really have to just listen to my body, like to be in tune with how I'm feeling. And if I feel good, I try to work out. If I don't feel good, I don't make myself work out because it's just, you know, you got to keep that balance and um, you got to just, I just have to listen to my body and decide, let my body tell me if I should be working out that day or not. But at the very least, I do 15 minutes of yoga. And even if that's just like child's pose or like laying on my back and like doing like very light stretches, um, I try to move my body in some way for at least 15 minutes every day. And I think that's been really good. And if you're interested in what I use for yoga and Pilates, um, I just do 
YouTube videos. So I love Blogilates and I love Yoga with Adrian. So I will link those down below and you guys can check them out if you're interested. All right, I have one last thing to update you guys on and it's a pretty big deal. So I bought maternity pants and these are from Gap. And they're actually just maternity leggings. Um, I bought two pairs of leggings, actually. I bought a pair that's just a size bigger than what I usually wear. Because I just feel bloated. And I don't know if it's like all the hormones this year. But like my leggings have just gotten so tight. And um, so I packed up a lot of my clothes and just put them away for now. And I'm just going to start getting some maternity pants. Because that sounds nice right now. Um, so I'm wearing some right now from Gap that are just basic... Um, leggings that are a size bigger than what I usually wear and they feel fine right now um, but I also did get these maternity um, leggings and I did try them on and they fit great um, the belly obviously is a little loose because I don't have anything going on there yet um, but I can just roll them down and they fit fine so I'll be able to get a lot of use out of these I am really excited that we're due in May because I feel like being pregnant through the winter sounds a lot better than being pregnant through the <laughs> summer but honestly, I'd be fine being pregnant whenever because we were just so grateful that it finally happened. Um, anyway, so that was kind of a big deal. Um, I was pretty excited slash like I couldn't even believe that I was buying maternity leggings. Like what is this life I'm living? All right, so that is the update for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this video is probably kind of long, um, but thanks for sticking around. And I hope you'll subscribe if you're new and if you are pregnant as well. I would love to hear how far along you are, what you're having, all that stuff in the comments below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because I'll do more day-to-day -day updates there. And if you guys have any requests for pregnancy videos or IVF, infertility, anything like that, any re video requests, please leave them below. I have a few um, like infertility, like IVF support videos that I'm planning on making. As far as pregnancy videos go though, I like just to have planned on doing the updates. So if you have anything you want to see from me, please let me know. Leave it in the comments below and I'd love to uh, see if I can make that happen. So anyway, thanks again for watching today. Thanks so much for all your support, all your love and for cheering us on. We're really excited and excited to have you join us on this new adventure and thank you again and i'll see you guys in my next video bye